I'm gonna have to sit like this for a while while the goo does its job. Don't goove up on me. And I'm out! I was trying to be dramatic and say I'm bad. Before we get started today, I just wanted to say a big thank you. Uh, yesterday there were like three of you and now there are 30,000. Hello to all of you, thanks for being here. If I had three words to describe myself, it would be spooky, cute grandma. And today I wanna to make a soup out of my essence and create an artifact that can be passed down for generations to come with my weird art. An heirloom perhaps for my non-existent grandchildren because all of my kids are sterile and covered in fur, so no one wants to date them. Lately, we have been delving into things that aren't popular anymore and kind of giving them a little bit of an edge. And I thought about what's the least popular piece of jewelry out there, a brooch. I don't really see people wearing brooches too often anymore, but I've noticed a little bit of a revival. I'm gonna be trying a bunch of new things. I feel like that's kind of the theme of the channel lately. Let's go ahead and get it started. Okay, so to fill you guys in on my plan, I wanna find an antique element for this brooch, so we're headed to the local antique mall. Basically, this is going to be half old stuff and half hand sculpted by me. This specific event that they were having brought a bunch of jewelry vendors in and I was hoping that they would have some of their cheaper items. Also, I just want to assure anybody that was concerned, the pieces that I ended up picking out, it's really easy for anybody, including myself, to reverse any piece of art I add to it. I picked ones that had dangling pieces with little o-rings in the center, so if they didn't like my art and they found it in the future, they could get rid of it and just have the original vintage piece. I also found a lot of things there that I was not expecting to and I could not leave behind. Plus I have a YouTube video enabling me to purchase weird things in the name of content. Thanks guys! So we are back from the vintage market and this is everything that I managed to grab. I've got all these different brooches that I thought that I could potentially build off of as a little bit of a base. Most of them look pretty sturdy. The one that I was hoping would work out, unfortunately when I got it home I realized that this ring here is soldered shut so that's not going to be an option because I don't know that I'm going to be able to return that to its original state if I built art off of it. I also picked up this Regency era necklace mainly because I wanted a little bit of inspiration from it. The vendor told me that it was oh, the lady that sold it to me told me that it was dated between the late 1800s and early 1900s and i really liked the design and thought that i might be able to find a way to incorporate it into our finished brooch so i thought this would be really cool to bring home and see if i could replicate some of these really beautiful elements now all of the brooches that i found are vintage in some way but majority of them are reproductions so they weren't too expensive i wanted a lot of options because as you guys know i tend to make quite a few mistakes and you can never have too many options if something doesn't work out. The pendant that I think that I'm going to tamper with is this one because it does have this nice little latch here. It was only $8. It's from the 80s, I believe, but it could also be a more modern reproduction. I'm not sure. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to take a couple of pictures of this and some nice lighting and then I'm going to get on my iPad and doodle some stuff over top of it and see what sort of options we have as far as design goes. So my initial design was to incorporate a little bit of everything that I wanted, something spooky, something cute, something ornate, and I put a rib cage in the center of this design, hoping that I could sculpt one and make it translucent. What I want to tell you guys right off the hop is not to get too attached to this initial spider design because I made some choices that were not the greatest. I don't want to say too much in case I am spoiling the ride for some of you, so I'm just gonna say I had to go through it so you guys can go through it with me. Now to get back to what I'm actually doing, we sculpted all the legs individually and then we baked them so that they wouldn't get all mucked up while I was working on the design. They were particularly fragile and I knew that going in, so I made sure that I baked them separately from the rest of the sculpt so that they wouldn't get bumped and damaged while I was doing everything else. Speaking on design flaws, I'm about to try and make a miniature rib cage to put inside of a translucent torso. If that doesn't say extra, I don't know what does. I'm gonna grab some popcorn. Tastes like failure. Guys, I don't know about this. It looks like a face hugger. I don't think I know what I'm doing. I think it was a little bit over ambitious. I don't think that there needs to be a rib cage inside. So I think we're just gonna have to say goodbye to the rib cage. With that disaster avoided, I needed to figure out how in the ding dang, dingity dang dang, I was gonna make this look like it was an antique. And so I pulled out that Regency era necklace that I had purchased and attempted to replicate some of the designs there out of clay when it was really made of wire, which was hard. Although along the way, it did bear a remarkable resemblance to a rabbit. 
Little bunny foo foo walking through the forest, turned into a spider and then he ate your head. I was struggling and I actually attempted to make some of the elements out of wire because it was so difficult to do it with clay. I don't like it. I'm gonna try it again later. I'm getting frustrated with it. I'm gonna take a break. So I went to the bed for the night and then I came back the next day and it went through probably 12 different iterations of me pulling clay off and putting it back on before I finally settled on a design that I felt reflected the Regency era necklace. And I decided that I was going to make the eyes out of pearls because the Regency era necklace had pearls and also the main brooch had pearls. It just seemed very fitting. I officially feel happy with the way that the sculpt looks. I'm gonna bake this, then I'm gonna give it a quick sand, pop out all of these eyes. The eyes are just there to keep the indentation for when we make the mold, so I don't actually need them in. And I'm gonna start building a wall of Lego and then it'll be time for us to make our mold. So, yay! The hardest part is done. And hopefully it's uphill from here. I always say things like that and then things go horribly wrong. I really hope nothing goes horribly wrong. Future me, please, please do good. <laughs> I feel like sometimes he thinks when I'm talking to you guys in here that I'm crying for him to come. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Hi, baby. Okay, I'll come say hello. So the next day I got to work on the finishing touches for the piece, which included the sanding and also lacquering. You just exploded all over my project. Rude. If you've seen one of my videos before, then you know that I build all of my molds out of Lego because they are reusable and cheap, just like me. I have two different mold kits, and I can't remember which one it is that I want to do because they're too similar. I feel like this is the one I want because I think this is the one that made the flaps that one time. Look at them flaps. And I don't want the flap mold. Oh yeah, that's flap colored. No flaps here. This is the one we want. Mold star 30. just at the bottom and we're running out but it's gonna be okay I'm gonna have to sit like this for a while while the goo does its job don't goof up on me oh shit look at the bot oh my god I'm pouring it all over the brooch uh the bottom of it there's like a bunch of weird stuff in there ultimately I don't know how that's gonna affect the mold but I mean surely the bottom bits are good I've made a lot of choices today and some of them are not good. As your formal instructor, mix until your forearms burn. Mix, mix it until your arm is on fire. <laughs> mix it until you smell burning flesh because your whole arm is ablaze. Mm. That's how real girls work out, okay? We work out so hard that we spontaneously come Bust. I wonder what sort of noise this spider would make while this is I can tell you exactly what happened right now. My husband totally used this to make a mold, so half of it was gone. And I thought, oh yeah, no, we've totally got like a whole other box of this. No, we don't. No, we don't. Well, I was hoping to have this here project done tomorrow, but guess what, folks? That's just not how it works in Carisvale. This is me going on to Amazon to order another mold kit. No matter what I did, the butt was showing. Yeah. So it is the next day, friends, and this has set up quite nicely, although my keen eye can still see a little bit of the butt. But, butts aside, I'm gonna demold it anyways to see how things turned out. I'm gonna do my first pour to see how that turns out. If we need to change anything, we can later down the road. Clumps have come back to haunt us. The solid advice I have for you guys, desperation does not breed success. I see a piece of the, the spider here, so we're just gonna go in here. This is also just a disclaimer in, in case I haven't said it before. Don't ever do the things that I do. I take so many risks with my crafts. Sometimes they're not safe. I'm not safe. I don't know how long my camera has stopped recording for. Um, I was just talking to you guys about something. Our spidey friend has a fish. <laughs> been demolished. This exploded off of this at one point. Yikes, that's uh, quite the aftermath. I've got some concerns about this mold. I'm concerned, my dear, you should be. Now, after I cleaned up this mold, I got myself covered in the PPE. I know I just said I'm not a safe person, but I am always safe when I'm dealing with harsh chemicals, and so should you be. We dusted this off with a little bit of gold just to give it a nice patina when we pour the resin. I hope you enjoy me screaming at you through my respirator. It's times like these I wish I had eight legs or arms so that I could stretch this open and then 
do the dusting at the same time. <laughs> now, even though I had ditched the rib cage, I was still going for sort of a smoky, translucent vibe with the resin. So I put just a little bit of the gold dust in there, as well as a few droplets of black, just so that it looked kind of murky, but still shiny with a little bit of glitter to it. When I poured the resin, I flexed the mold a little bit just to try and get everything into the nooks and crannies. And then with the leftover resin, I poured it into this other mold that I had previously created because I knew I would have some leftovers from the multiple pours I was planning to do with this project and I didn't want to be wasteful. Okay friends, it's the next day and we are going to demold this to see if it actually worked or if we're gonna have to start from scratch. This guy has cured here. I'm just gonna move it out of the way. As I go along, I'm gonna keep adding more resin to it. Fingers crossed, wish me luck. Uh, well, hey, there's one leg. That's really neat. I love how this piece finished up. So I'm wondering if maybe when I put it in the mold again, I could get my husband's assistance with holding this open. My crevice assistant is here to splay open my mold for me and I'm gonna inject this into the crevices. Yeah, spread it up, spread it wide. It's like those videos where they fill the jelly donut. Fill our little spider baby with juice. That's not right. Add to it, I'm just gonna scooge into the hole. How, is there a way that I can say this that doesn't sound completely wrong? Like, is there any way that I can talk about what I'm doing right now that doesn't sound like I'm trying to be dirty because I am not trying to be dirty? There's no way. <laughs> it has been several days. Let's see how those injections did. I'm nervous and excited. I'm nervous and excited. Hey, it looks like that foot went all the way to the end, so that's a good sign. Oh, what is going on in there? Oh, no. Well, some of them just ripped clean off. Is that better or worse? That's worse than the first one. Well, some parts are better, some parts are worse. The casting itself, better. Also, where are the rest of the legs? Oh dear. Yeah, the legs are breaking. I don't know if this mold's gonna work. Look at that, that's a broken leg piece. It hurts to open it, ow. I can't make heads or tails of this. I can't, I can't right now. I cannot do this right now. It's time for a new segment. I'm gonna call this floor talk. This is where I get on the floor and we talk. So I am not a quitter, but I am currently feeling the flaws of this design in a big way. And I do feel like the sculpt is off. I feel like the legs are fragile. I feel like I didn't think about how I was gonna get the resin inside of the legs. There's just a lot of things that I didn't consider when I was designing my spider. And I'm really sad because I love the body. I love the torso. I think that that looks really, really good. But I feel in order to preserve my mental health and well-being, that it would be a good idea for me to start over. So if that's what we're going to do now. I don't feel like starting over is giving up. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I've been going through some stuff. And it would be great if I could just have something that would work. And so I decided to start from literally square one with something that would always work for me, cats. I just wanted to take this opportunity to remind you guys that succeeding doesn't always mean sticking with something that's not working for you. Sometimes it means walking away from a project or even a person that's not working for you. Okay, so I have the design finished. So I'm gonna get my clay out. I'm gonna make sure that I've got this to size and I'll be following it on my iPad just so that I can make sure that I'm doing everything to scale. Because I really love my cat. I always want her close to my heart. So this is kind of perfect. I'm way more excited and I feel way better about this design. Sculpting this piece was super straightforward. I just used some of the leftover polymer clay that I had and I made a kitty face. And I also used, if you can see in the background, there's a bronze kitten. I wanted an example of something that had really simple lines, but that looked quite elegant so that I could make sure stuff wasn't sticking in the mold. I also happened across these vintage rhinestones in my stash. A friend of mine gave these to me 10 years ago and I like to add a couple to any special project that I'm working on. One of the bonuses to working with polymer clay is that you can bake it to save your progress and then just put a layer of liquid Sculpey over top before you add any details so that your bottom piece doesn't get messed up. It currently looks like he just got a really excellent set of eyebrows. I'm not mad about that. These are so excellent. Oh, wouldn't it be really cute if I gave it some whiskers? But then, dear friends, I think we would run into the same issue that we'd had previously with the spider legs. Good morning friends, it's the next day and this guy's all baked and ready to be sanded. I was up late working on this last night, making sure that I got it finished. So I'm going to sand this guy down and then pop it into its mold. I have a good feeling. 
and I have enough mold maker this time, which is another bonus. <laughs> so I'm feeling pretty confident, guys. How about you? It's another wonderful morning, it's another wonderful day, and it's time for us to unmold. Easy peasy. Oh, this is so much easier to navigate. Say la vie. Not too bad. Just a couple little bits that got stuck. Honestly, there isn't too much cleanup to do on this, so I'm just gonna go straight ahead, put some gold in there, and pour some resin. does that ever look cool and definitely looks antique as well. So there were two main hurdles that I faced with this mold. It had trouble getting the resin to flow into the bottom parts of the ribbon, so I applied a couple of different techniques. I poured the resin at an angle, I also used the little squeezy tube that I previously used on our spider, and I also put a toothpick in there to release any air bubbles. The other hurdle that I faced, I actually forgot to lacquer my piece before I made the mold, so when the molds were coming out, they weren't shiny. But I did find a lacquer that I could put on top, and it gave the glow that I had initially wanted, so that was a really easy fix. I'm not gonna bore you guys with going through each of these pores individually. What I will say is that we did get three different castings, none of which turned out absolutely perfect. And looking back at my comment about the flaps mold, I wonder now if something a little bit more stretchy might have made the perfect product. Now that I had all of my castings done, I went ahead and got started on the cameo. The cameo from the Regency era necklace is actually made out of coral, so it has a little bit of a translucent effect to it, and that's why I mixed a little bit of translucent clay in with my base pink clay. I also wanted to be able to add my logo to this piece, so I dusted down a little bit of rolled out polymer clay, and I used a clover cookie cutter so that it was kind of lucky before stamping it with my logo so that I could place it on the back. I also decided that I wanted to give one of these imperfect friends to one of my friends, and she really hates pink, so I made a green cameo because I would like for us to stay friends, and if I give her something pink, she might murder me. After I had all of my pieces ready, I decided to get to work cleaning up the backs. This is one of the issues with being really accident prone and a perfectionist. I'm beating myself up because I didn't get the backs perfect, but it really doesn't matter. I put on my anchor hoops and then I put the logos on the back and secured them with a little bit of UV resin in hopes of smoothing out some of my issues. Again, this still didn't really fix everything, but I did use it to fill in some of the bubbles from when I had done my initial pours and it made things a little bit smoother and more polished. When I'm securing jewelry findings, I like to use this gel-based super glue by Loctite. It is thebomb.com. I also recommend using gloves when you're dealing with super glue because I've glued my fingers together a couple of times and a toothpick comes in handy for preserving your digits from pain. Also, I finally shoved my anxiety about getting a Patreon down and I've started it. So I will be giving one of these pieces to one of my Patreon subscribers, namely this pretty pink bow friend. So for the final touches to my brooch, I needed a picture to go inside of my locket and I picked these ones of my kitty and printed them off in different sizes and it reminded me of those funny school photo packs. Do you remember when you used to rush home from school to share your school photos? It's picture day. Now I have more than two cats and you might be wondering why I selected these two to go in the locket above the others and it's because these ones were sweetly curled up in the studio with me while I was making it, so I felt like it had their energy. And they didn't break anything of mummies during this video like their brothers. Amazing. And now, without further ado, it's time for our moody glamour shots. Now that the project is all finished, it's time for some final thoughts. Let's start off with where I thought that we could improve. Looking 
back, I actually think that our flappy mold that I was initially afraid of using might have been a better option for the spider, and I'd love to be able to try something like that again. I also feel like I would really love to find a way to perfect the backs of these pieces, but I think that that's something that will come with time, and I'll get there eventually. I'm also really excited to finally be starting a Patreon and to have something that I'm pretty proud of to share with you guys. Whoever gets this, just be aware there's a couple of hiccups, but I think it's very pretty, personally. I'm deeply in love with this piece, and I feel like I'm probably going to wear it for the rest of my life with pride, especially because I can carry my kitties with me, and it has so much more sentimental meaning than the initial piece. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that if you enjoyed this video, you'll check out my other artwork for sale in my online shop, because if you do that, that's how I can continue to make more fun content like this. You'll also be able to find my Patreon and other social media links down below. Thanks for being here today. Okay, I love you. Bye!